In our interview with Mark Cerulli, he talked about the most famous graphics designer that no one knows, Joe Karoff. Well, we thought we'd reach out to Joe and talk with him about his designs, especially for the James Bond movies. Welcome, Joe. Well, thank you. Yeah. We're happy to have you on. We are honored to be speaking with you. Joe, before the James Bond stuff, you have worked on some designs people all over the world would recognize. Please tell us about some of the designs you created before James Bond and shortly thereafter. And what was your first big one? Well, I think the first big one that, that achieved some notoriety because it was a, what's the word I want, a departure from general book jacket designing was for Norman Mailer's The Naked and the Dead. Ah, okay. And so you did the cover uh, for that? That was, uh, oh yes, okay. I did the cover for that, awesome. exactly. Then I did um, West Side Story. Oh my God. I, I love poster. that one. Yeah, I've West actually got a question Story. for you about that one. So on the West Side Story, you've got the that fire escape there. You've got the lettering kind of looking like brickwork. And Tony and Maria are dancing. Now, when they did the first Broadway production of it, the posters for them just were kind of like of people dancing. So do you remember how you thought of the fire escape and the silhouettes of the dancers? I know this is a long time ago. Fantastic. Well, it's just normally in this kind of work, the title is put on the background and then there's an illustration to accompany it. In this case, the title becomes the illustration. It is the illustration. And so when I saw the letters West Side Story, I compacted them a little more by virtue of how I placed the lettering mm -hmm. and then extended the lettering to form part of the building with fire escapes. And I put the dude dancers there. So it reflected the quality of the film itself but it also just became a just strong poster as a poster. Yes, it is absolutely fabulous. And everybody in the world knows that poster. <laughs> We're talking yes. to you, the creative genius who did it. <laughs> Thank you. And now you've done other stuff too, <laughs> like uh, Manhattan, let's say. Oh, Manhattan. Yes, that's, uh, I did that for Woody Allen directly. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, the experience with Woody Allen was interesting. We couldn't just design a single poster for him to make it to a choice. So we usually, at half size, mm -hmm. would design six versions of the poster. And we, we were set up on little easels. And he would come into the room and point to the one that he liked and then leave the room. He would never say a word. <laughs> really? Once, because we, we wanted to, we wanted to get rid of that formality and that silence, we made up a fake poster uh, and we titled it Prunes, the most <laughs> moving picture since Bananas. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> when we put that up on the six little easels interpreting his next movie, he saw it, but never said a word to react to it, never smiled, never anything. Wow. That, that was Woody. Wow. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, man. What? So, that was Woody. Mm -hmm. How did, how did yeah. he select the brilliant uh, design you did do with the buildings and the windows. I mean, it's just fabulous. How did you think of that? Number one. And what did he say to that? When he, did he say anything when he saw that? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. He, Woody, Woody is not a communicator. Wow. At least not at a personal level. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I don't know, maybe he was just deathly afraid of being quoted. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But it is a fabulous logo with the, the bill. How did you come up with the concept for that? Because it's just brilliant. It's just beautiful. Well, when I lettered the words Manhattan, I saw that virtually all of the uh, letters were tall verticals. Okay. If you spell out the word, you realize yes. it's, they're mostly all vertical types of, of um, type. Mm-hmm. Kind of in a way, it gave its its own birth. Then it only became a question of adding little architectural details yeah. to um, 
help it to look more like buildings. Yeah, it looks like Manhattan. I mean, it's just yes. it's, it's beautiful, just beautiful, Joe. Now, you've done some other things, too. Thank you. Tell, tell us about a couple of the other things before we get to the James Bond part. <laughs> yes, we we did cabaret. Wow. Jeez. And cabaret, uh, when I lettered it across horizontally on the poster, it just seemed too cramped and unexciting. So I said, what the hell? Let's do it vertically, and we'll put um, our little darling <laughs> on top of it. Yes. So yeah. that's how that one was done. Yeah, that's that's very, very that's cool. That's a gorgeous it's... one. Again, anybody in theater, anybody in the movies, anybody, everybody's going to know that poster. Life is a cabaret. I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, and, okay. and Sally Bowles on top of the word cabaret. There's just, yeah. I mean, that's just I'm like tea. that's yeah. yeah, that's that's awesome. It really is. Yep, yeah. it works well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I also enjoy doing the poster for Zelig. Okay. okay. You remember, remember Zelig? Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, Zelig, as you know, takes on all of these various characters, so that was an easy solution. I just repeated the word Zelig over and over again and stacked them vertically. Okay. And in that way, um, I got all the different characters in. Yeah. They, well, and you had, you had the way Zelig was. And you had the different, you had the different fonts for each of those Zeligs and different color combinations. Mm-hmm. Were you trying yes, to t- The only one I did not letter was the fifth one, which is all capitals. Okay. Right. Right. Down, yeah. That one I did not letter. I lettered all the rest. Wow, yeah. that's cool. So, I mean, th- this is stuff everybody in the world knows. You know, right? and, and then for these posters and so on, did you get credit on the posters for these things? No. Wow. Unbelievable. No, the only time I ever added a credit line to a piece of work that, that was to be published was on The Naked and the Dead. Way up in the corner, I signed my... Um, my name, but I spelled it K-A-R-O-V because I thought they would have more impact. <laughs> but I have never used it more than that one time. Wow. Okay, wow. That's incredible. Then there's a very, the big poster that was done for Too Late the Hero. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There, the lettering was just the word war. Wow. And to do that, we can actually constructed it out of uh, plywood and posed a soldier on top of it and photographed it. And that became our poster for it's a dying business too late to hero. Wow. Wow. That's fantastic. And you did uh, last tango in Paris. You've you've done a lot of stuff that everybody would know. I I, I did a lot of stuff. Thank goodness. (laughs) Kept me alive. (laughs) Yes, it did. Then there was the Beatles, a hard day. Yes, I was going to ask about that too. It's like everybody knows. Uh, the Beatles. I enjoyed that immensely because we, it it was it was the whole idea was jolly, yeah. keep it fun. Yeah, that's why I uh, only allowed the Beatles. I cut off just below the eyes, uh, and each picture I have four of them in the poster. Mm-hmm. And each on, with a different color background. Yeah, fantastic. That is. All right, Joe. They were known for their similar hairstyles, so that's what we accented. Yeah, yep. the mop heads or whatever they called them, I think, at the time, you know. It's yeah. Like, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> right. All right, Joe, our podcast is focused on spy movies, so we wanted to ask you about probably one of the most famous logos ever created, that being the 007 logo that you designed. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do, do you? Well, I, I have to tell you quite honestly, yeah. that was a totally spontaneous piece of creativity. I simply sat at my desk and wrote 007 in yeah. pencil mm-hmm. on a piece of paper. And the minute I wrote the seven, especially on the downstroke, I had just somehow immediately saw that as a handle of a gun. Wow. So adding the barrel and the trigger was virtually nothing to do, and it became a logo. Oh, my God. But you have to know that sometimes a thing like that 
it, it becomes ubiquitous because it's used so often it it's becomes very well known. Yeah, it's been used for over 60 years now, and uh, I think any it's, it's perhaps the most famous logo in the world, really, because of you. Now, how did you get that? Well, I know it's globally recognized. I know that. Absolutely. Tell you what has done, what that, what that logo has done for me. Okay. I've gotten letters from Belgium, from Germany, from Poland, uh, guys who are either designers or, or, or I don't know what movie enthusiasts. I have no idea, Mm -hmm. but they write to me and want me to sign photostats of the different logos. Oh my wow. God. That's fantastic. It yeah. is. Yeah. 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 I become a, a kind of a, a lowercase fan character. <laughs> you're a celebrity, yeah. Joe. You are Joe. <laughs> I, I mean, I think Mark's right. You know, you're, you're the most famous graphic designer that nobody knew, but now they do. And, uh, it's fantastic. The work you've done <laughs> yeah. is just absolutely on. Uh-huh. Yes. So, yes. so that's fantastic. Now you've designed the 007 project and you sold it to Eon, right? I mean, that, that was your job. And then you went on your way of creating right. other designs. So did you know that this 007 was going to be a huge hit when you did it? Of course not. <laughs> no, I, I had no notion of that at all. Okay. But in when, as a designer, no matter what I'm designing, I'm always hoping that what I design will last a long time. Sure. I, I don't want to see them die overnight. Right. So I put everything I've got into them and hoping that they will last. Yes. Because I want them to become globally recognized. And you have succeeded. So, <laughs> you have succeeded at that. No question about it. Tom. I have succeeded. We are honored them. speaking Absolutely. with you. Yep. Honest to God. This is cool. Oh, this thank is cool. you so much. Yeah. Our mm-hmm. pleasure. Now, when you did the 007 logo, did they ask for revisions along the way? And, oh, do this, do that? Or did you present it and they just said, oh, man, this is fantastic? No. Uh, what happens is I designed it, and then I discovered that in certain other countries, picking up a James Bond movie and, and having the 007 logo, I've kind of redesigned the 007 logo themselves. Mm. I always thought to a disadvantage, or maybe that bruised my ego, (laughs) whichever it was. I I never thought they were as well, looked as good as the one that I did. Yeah, yeah, your original design is just fabulous. And again, even though they've tweaked it, it looks like over the years, the concept is yours and it's there because of you, which is, Awesome. Just awesome. Yeah. When you design something like that, you just, as, as you design it, you do a contract work, you give up all rights to it, right? It's just, you just say, here it is, and they just take it and run with it, which allows them to make changes, right? I uh, don't uh, allow choices. In other words, I do not show uh, four, five, or six versions of something like that and have them choose the one they like. Okay. I never, ever allowed that. I wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. I do enough of those sketches before the client sees the final. I do so many of them mm-hmm. and criticizing my own stuff till I come to pick up the one that I think is going to really work. And that's the only one I show the client. Wow. I do not allow the client to make choices. Okay. That's my job. Okay. Now, uh, if, I actually, I like that. Yeah. If they reject the one you show them, has that ever happened? That's okay. I got the one here. It is boom. Like the 007, they just liked it, right? They liked it immediately and you, they took it. Are there others that no? They... but I, I, I have had the experience of a client looking at a, what I consider the final answer and he'd say anything else. <laughs> and I would say there is no else. <laughs> this is it. Wow. <laughs> Well, that's how good you are. I mean, come on, that's good, right? It's, it's good. a tough, it's a tough business. Yeah. Now, besides the logo for 007, I know you've done some work on other James Bond movies. I know you did some stuff with From Russia with Love. Did you do that typeface for that? The O has the hammer and sickle in it. Was that your your design? 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, do you stop just yes. with those letters, or do you do a full font series of the whole alphabet for other for other? Oh words? no, I don't work that way at all. I just, okay. I just, I try and keep a unified typography okay. when I do it. Certainly, um, but um, I very often don't go to real alphabets to produce a logo. Mm-hmm. I letter it myself. Okay. Wow. Right. That's, that's so more part of your creative genius. Not easy to do. Yeah. And I, and I, and I love that hammer and sickle in the O. So I thought that was a really great <laughs> j- design choice you made there. So, yeah. Now uh, have you done some of the posters, right? some of the posters for the James Bond movies, any of the. No. Movies? Okay. That's no just, post work. Okay. Curious. No, I really haven't. But you've done some of the font work and, and so on typeface yeah. stuff. Wow. So is, is, was it font That's work? Right. Then? Was it font work for Thunderball? I know you did Thunderball, You Only Live Twice, and Diamonds Are Forever. I lettered the Thunderball lettering, yes. Okay, all Fantastic. right. Fantastic. To go with Bob Peake's illustration, which was terrific. Yes, awesome. Yes, yes. And and so uh, we, I think Tom asked this already. You, you get no residuals for this kind of thing. It's contract work that you do, right, and that you've done, that you've you present that's that exactly right yeah that's exactly right has that changed at all in the um, industry now do you think or is it the same no it's the same it's a job it's a job okay you do it you get paid and then and that's the end of it okay um and if it's picked up or repeated in, in some in, in any other context you don't earn any residuals okay. that's it's you sold it and that's it okay the job was done and on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So in the documentary by design, the Joe Karoff story, you talk about some of the, I don't know if there were apprenticeships or where you worked for people pretty early on. And did any of those people become mentors? And what did you learn from them as you did that? Because I, I found that fascinating well, as we're talking about the different people you're working with. I work with Jean Carlu. He's a, Fantastic designer. I don't know if you remember a great big black glove holding a wrench. Yes. Yeah. And the wrench is around the word O in production, America's answer. Right. Have you seen that? Yes, yeah. I have. It was, you guys, it was in the okay. documentary. Well, <laughs> I worked with Carlu on that. Okay. He was a, he was a very nice guy. But you know, when he was 17 years old, crossing a winter street, over trolley tracks Mm -hmm. and a trolley ran over him and took away one arm. Wow. And uh, despite all of it, it drove him absolutely crazy, of course, because he just lost his drawing arm. And his brother, who was a well-known architect in France, grabbed hold of him and said, don't give in to this crap. Your talent is in your head and not in your not in just in your hand. So that's one of the reasons I was hired to help him to produce. So he would come up with an idea and say, can you do this? And you would draw it out and he'd say, no, like this or whatever and shape it a little. Well, yeah. There's a certain amount of exploration and you fiddle around till you feel that you, you know what you're reaching for a certain design that's going to promote recall. Right. Yes. So yeah. that's what yeah. you work towards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Terrific. You have yeah. to work towards some, something that will immediately, mm-hmm. by virtue of its look, promote the recall and have that personality. Yes, yes, yes. To be yes. recognized again. Yes, and you've done that with all of your work. Yes. I have just a general question about that because when you got a new when you got a new project, what were some of the challenges you faced in just getting started? on the creative designs. I mean, that had to be a challenge when you're looking at your blank sheet of paper <laughs> and you're thinking, okay, where do I start? Well, it, cer- it certainly is a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing I do, I, I don't always immediately sit down with pencil and paper to start scribbling to find a what, are, what can I get invent. I first sit down and I say the title to myself a few times. Mm-hmm. And to see that if that just brings up anything. Okay. And after, I don't know, not more than 15 minutes of that, I say, well, it doesn't bring up anything. So let's start going to some visual stuff. Okay. 
So it's a matter of sitting down and, and scribbling a little bit, reaching for some kind of thing that you're going to know going to be recognizable. Uh-huh. And you take it from there. <laughs> if you've got uh, the talent like you. Yes. If you have the talent to do it. <laughs> that. The first aspect is you want the design to work as a personality. You want it to represent as much as possible the picture uh, that it's going to be representing. Personality. Uh, I love that. It's got, it's got to be a personality. That's, that's a great way that's to look right. at this. That's perfect. That's that's yes, it. yes. Yeah. And um, you fool around with that. You, you reach towards something. You, you, you want to create something that's going to have the power to be recognized later on and, and away from the situation itself. So that's what you reach for. Yeah. And you've, and you've reached and grasped it your whole career. <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I have been very successful. That's true. Absolutely. I think one of the things I enjoyed so much was the last temptation of Christ. Yes. I don't know if you, can you visualize that poster yes. in your mind? Yes, I have it in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, now there, for example, Martin Scorsese, who directed that movie, met with me uh, and a, my, uh, my then partner, and he sat down and told us all the things that he thought should be make for a good poster. Mm-hmm. Well, I listened to him and listened to him, and he didn't have the visual, um, what's the word I want, the visual gift of seeing it differently. You can only saw it in his military way. So when I thought of the idea of, since it's the last temptation of Christ, and immediately the thorns are an obvious, clear association to Christ. I said, well, let's go whole hog. This is a bright red poster with the black thorns. It was very, very strong. And I don't know if you realize that Scorsese loved it so much. It opens up his movie. Okay, yeah. (laughs) Did you know that? No, yeah, I, don't, I didn't recall that. that. I didn't that, remember that's that. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm looking at the poster now, and it's just, it's absolutely yeah. fabulous. I mean, talk about capturing the, the whole yes. concept of the last temptation of Christ. I mean, fabulous. And that was the goal. Yeah. yeah. Red and black so now, and bold. In, in another vein, you also did the promotional book work for The Greatest Story Ever Told. And in, true. in that one, you took some creative. I'll use the word license. I'm not sure. You you did some stuff in how that book was going to have to be printed that had to escalate the cost of printing pretty dramatically. And when yes. I say that, and I'll let you talk about some of the things you did there, the half pages and stuff, but did you get pushback because of what it was going to do to the cost of publication? They were so taken by the concept. They said, let's go. We'll spend the money. Great. Uh, yeah. Because it, it, it really they is. Happy, they were happy to do it. Yeah. When, uh, when you talked about that and showed that book in the documentary, yeah. it was like, wow, that was fantastic. It's and then I, and I think about when I've gone to management with things, it's like, well, yeah, but that's going to cost a lot more. But so they went with it. That's good. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. This is great, Joe. And that's a wrap. Joe, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to jump on this call with us. You've had a fascinating 50-plus year career. We'd especially like to thank you for your wonderful 007 logo. As James Bond fans, it wouldn't be Bond without it. Very well. Right. Glad to have had the interview. Right. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank Thanks. you very much for your good attention. Thank, thank you, you very much, Joe. It's been a pleasure. Take care. You, you too. too. Bye-bye. 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 This has been Dan and Tom of SpyMovieNavigator.com and our show Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Subscribe to our show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it.